Just like that jingo I've been do, we talk say health and our wealth, and that now why we know they joke with anything we guys do with health. You know, because we know say now when you do our life, now you go feel the reason say you won't go work. Now when you do our life, you go to feel the talk say you won't go make money. Now when you do our life, you go to reason say, oh, one bad day. People wait on mud, wait they more try. Trust me, they never sabi the color where they pick for the wedding we go to share it today. So no ever ever reason now to say you won't joke with your health. And thank God, yes, we get a certified person. Person, you know, we say, Baba God, he's a blessed. Person, we be saying, now waiting, go school, go study. Yes, he chop and sleep with that. Talking about health, he sabi everything. That now every Saturday from 8.30. Dr. Batty, they always day here. He carry on a matter for head like beans. We never done. You know, when it comes to health, he doesn't joke with it. My doctor. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> of them Dr. So bad. I'm happy to be back yes, with you so this morning. Good morning. Good, good to morning see you. to you. Good to see you, sir. Good morning, viewers at home and around the world. We're happy to be back today on Health Matter. Yes, sir. November happens to be the month mm. of raising awareness of the impact of diabetes on all of us. Mm. I, you will need to find out why I said all, all of us. Yes. Yeah. Probably at the end of this presentation. <laughs> oh, no way. Thank you very much. Now, today's topic has to do with diabetes and COVID-19. Every 14th of November, the world observes World Diabetes, diabetes. Day. Okay. And that is why we are explaining the topic this morning so that we can get familiar mm -hmm. with what causes diabetes, symptoms of diabetes, the risk factors that can predispose anybody to having diabetes. And of course, for you to find out what to look out for, I can tell you that a certain percentage of the people who are diabetic are still very much undiagnosed. Mm. People who are diabetes have no idea that they have diabetes. And oftentimes, by the time they are getting to discover their status, it may have caused some uh, complications in their system. But first, we want to look at a simplified definition of diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic disease that has to do with the body's inability to either produce enough quantity or to effectively use the, the insulin that the bod body has produced. Diabetes has to do with poor processing or handling of insulin, which is a type of hormone in the human body. The function of insulin is to regulate the blood sugar in the body. And when that function is not properly carried out by the body, for one or two reasons, it results in diabetes. Now, to take it further, diabetes has to do with a raised blood glucose or a raised blood sugar, if you like. What happens is that there's a part of the human body called the pancreas that produces a hormone called insulin. The duty of this hormone is to regulate the sugar in the human body. When we eat food in the course of our daily lives, we eat a number of classes of foods. It could be carbohydrates, it could be protein, it could be fats and oil, it could be whatever. But keep in mind that the carbohydrate containing food needs to be broken down to a smaller component that our body system can make use of. That smaller component that the body system can make use of is called glucose. So the carbohydrate that we eat all the time gets broken down to glucose, which the body makes use of. It's something similar with protein. When you eat egg, fish, meat, or any other uh, protein-containing food, the body system will need to get it broken down to a smallest component that the body can make use of in the case of protein, it is called amino acids. For fats and oil, they are called lipids. 
Okay? So now what, what happens with diabetes is that for one reason or the other, this glucose begins to get accumulated mm. in the bloodstream. The cells of the body are unable to assess them, to make use of them. Don't forget, it is this glucose that our body makes use of that helps us to produce the energy mm. with which we talk, walk, and carry out our daily, our daily activities or chores. But in a situation where the body is una unable to introduce yeah. insulin, it becomes a problem. And that, of course, will lead us to diabetes type 1, mm. where the body is incapable of producing insulin. When the body is able to produce insulin, but not in enough quantity, and there is also an ineffectual use of this insulin that has been produced by the body, it gives rise to diabetes type 2. Previously, insulin-dependent diabetes was used to describe diabetes type 1. I like using that phrase because it gives us a good view of what we are talking about. What that means is that anybody who has type 1 diabetes, we need to depend on insulin to stay alive. Insulin was discovered about 100 years ago. And this year's theme for World Diabetes Day is access to diabetic, diabetes care. If not now, when? Now, if this insulin is not produced by the body, we are talking about diabetes type 1. And in the olden days, anybody who has diabetes type 1 will have just a few weeks to a few months to live before the person dies, before the discovery of insulin. It, it was that tragic. It was that bad. That is how, how you can now yeah. understand the, uh, uh, the term insulin dependent, which is no longer used. Type 2 diabetes, insulin is produced, but surely not in enough quantity to meet up the demands of the body. Added to that is that the cells of the body are resisting the uptake of this glucose. So what you have is that when you eat breakfast, carbohydrate containing bread or some other things, your body system will produce some, uh, it, of course, your body, your body system derives some sugar. It stays the body may make use of it just a little, and of course, by the next meal, you're probably taking a carbohydrate-containing food, you're building up, you're increasing the amount of glucose in your system. Mm. It gets to a level that it goes beyond normal, in which case it is referred to as hyperglycemia, going beyond the normal value. When that happens, it affects the whole of your system. The body will start struggling. The body will increase the production of insulin to meet up with the new challenge. In so doing, it will start taking out plenty of water. Because the body is not used to that yes. type of challenge before. And that will result in the passage of excessive urine, which could be at night or during the day. So one of the symptoms will be yeah, frequent okay. urination. Okay. But let me say that the symptoms for diabetes type 1 and type 2 both they are similar, but their timing are not usually the same. Okay. For type 1 diabetes, the symptom can occur with, from day, between days to weeks. Okay? But for type 2 diabetes, it could take years, months and years. Well, and that is why oftentimes strange. people may not know that they have diabetes type 2. Okay, so it's not usually very obvious. The symptoms are usually not very noticeable in type 2. Sometimes there may not even be symptom at all in people who are developing it newly. But for type 1 diabetes, you may have things like frequent urination, increased hunger, loss of weight, increased thirst. The person will want to drink and drink and drink water. Weakness, easy fatigability, lack of energy. And sometimes, the sugar level can rise beyond the certain level that the person can have what is referred to as diabetic ketoacidosis. That can occur early on in type 1 diabetes, which of course is a medical emergency. 
that will present with another set of symptoms, symptoms entirely. The person may have fruity, uh, smelling breath. Okay, the person will have shortness of breath, acidotic breathing, and some other ones. If it is not urgently uh, uh, diagnosed and tackled, it could, such a person may end up with seizures, and oftentimes it could result in coma and death. Okay, so we need to know our status. We, re we respect to whether we are diabetic or not. But these signs are usually very classic when we are talking about type 1. Type 2, too, could present with all of these symptoms or some of these symptoms that we have mentioned this morning. Apart from type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes, before we look at the causes, there is also a third major one that I would like to mention. There are other smaller, uh, less uh, um, common ones that we also may mention in the course of the presentation. But it will be nice for us to know that there is also a third type called gestational diabetes. Okay, not diabetes type 3 this time. <laughs> no, not type 3. <laughs> not type 3, thank you very much. Now, gestational diabetes has to do with gestation. Gestation means pregnancy, yes. okay? Oftentimes, we we'll call it pregnancy-induced diabetes. Mm -hmm. This happens in people who were previously not diabetic, mm -hmm. okay? And they all have different risk factors. But in the case of gestational diabetes, oftentimes when the woman delivers a baby, the diabetes resolves over a period of time. But it is also a risk factor for such a person to develop type 2 diabetes later, much later in life. Mm. Also along that line, there are a number of risk factors too that can predispose uh, a pregnant woman to having gestational diabetes. Number one is family history of diabetes. Mm. Number two may have to do with a history of having had stillbirth mm. in the past or having delivered babies that weighed beyond or above nine pounds, four kg in this environment. We we'll refer to them as macrosomic babies. But let's go back to the causes of diabetes. Let's start with type 1. What are the causes of diabetes type 1? The causes of diabetes type 1 are not yet clearly known by the scientific community. But it is believed that it has to do with an autoimmune process that brings about a destruction of the cells that are found in the pancreas that are responsible for, 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 the, uh, responsible for, the, for, for the production of insulin. These cells are referred to as beta cells that are usually located at the islet of Langerhans found in the pancreas. So the body system it's an autoimmune problem or disorder, if you like. The body system begins to identify the cells of some part of the cells of the pancreas as a foreign body, and thereby they attack and damage and kill those cells. And those beta cells, when they are damaged, they will lose the ability to produce insulin. And that is why this is found more in children and young adults talking about type 1 diabetes. Hmm. There are also some risk factors that may have to do, that is believed to have a role to play when it comes to type 1 diabetes. Genetics, family history, history. and in some cases, environmental factors do not yet proven. But type 2 diabetes have its own set of risk factors some preventable, some non-preventable, or modifiable and non-modifiable. Thank God, say before now, Dr. Ba don't even tell law. Say most people, they actually work out with diabetes and they no know. And in my head, doctor, I'm trying to understand, like, are there no pointers? You know, if you get malaria 
and maybe start to the wrong temperature. Okay, most times in this part of the world, anyways, if you get a dick, you don't tell yourself, I think it's malaria. I think it's malaria. And when you use a particular drug for so long, you know, get cured, you get to go to the hospital. But now for this, I don't know, are there pointers? I'm stylishly asking my questions already, anyways. So are there pointers? Are there like, maybe like, there are things that maybe you, once you see, just not say, okay, oh, okay, oh probability or possibilities they say I don't get diabetes. So are there pointers to, you know, at least for us to watch out for, just to be sure or to receive? The symptoms of mm. type 1 and type 2 diabetes are basically the same. Mm. Okay, but the major difference is that for type 2 diabetes, because it takes long to develop, mm -hmm. okay, the symptoms may not be overtly noticeable. Mm. For instance, Take, for instance, somebody who has diabetes type 1. All of a sudden, the person discovers that he can now pee up to 15 to 20 mm. times in one day. Mm. Maybe 10 times during the day, five or more times at night. Mm. He just notices that he's losing strength. Mm. He eats well, or he's mm. losing weight. Mm. Okay? You may be thinking, what is going on? Sometimes it could even be a relation of yours, or probably somebody who works with you in the office can, that can point out to you that... Guy, um, what's going on? <laughs> what's happening with you? you? You seem to be losing weight. Mm -hmm. You need to go see your doctor and all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so gradually, yeah. the symptoms will begin to manifest. As against having very developing quick symptoms mm. or quicker symptoms that you have in type 1, in which case you just discover that you're, you're weak, mm. you have loss of energy, you cannot explain, but you had your breakfast, you have taken uh, lunch, during the uh, afternoon period and you're about to, but you can't explain why oh, you're yeah. just oh, weak, yeah. why you just keep drinking plenty of water, okay? Eating voraciously mm. as if you've never, uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, so these are some of the danger signs that when one begins to see them, you need to go to your doctor and then have a check. Mm. And good thing, the checks that need to be done or the simple tests that need to be done are also very cheap. Mm. They're not expensive. To have your blood sugar test done won't mm. cost too much. To have a random blood sugar or fasting blood sugar test done in a hospital, these three tests I mentioned can, may not cost you more than two to 5,000 no naira, depending on where you're doing it. Mm. Okay, but that can actually let this information out, give you an idea of what is going on mm. in your system. Okay, so let's look at, let's mention the symptoms just because I have said them. Okay. okay, so there could be problem with the vision. Mm. Blurring vision. Mm. Don't forget, a certain percentage of people in the population, I think about 2 to 3% yes. of people who are blind in the population as a result of oh, diabetes. We're already having callers. Prosper from Imo. Yes, okay, good okay, morning, good madam. Wonder. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? I'm fine. Please feel good free. morning, doctor. Uh, good morning, Mr. Prosper. Uh, thank you, sir. Nice to have you on the show. Uh, well, I have to matter. Yes, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I want to ask the doctor a question. I think this part of the world that we are, mm. we are only easily access to diabetes to carbohydrate foods. What is the way out? So I want. Prosper, turn down the volume on your TV. Yeah. How do we do? Because a layman in this part of the world easily buys or gets carbohydrate food like and protein or food. And diabetes is, diabetes is related to carbohydrate food. So I'm asking a question. How can we manage to escape this diabetes as we are access to carbohydrate food? Yeah, foods? more carbohydrate than any other thing. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. Basically, his question centers on prevention. Hmm. Uh, uh, and again, I, I am familiar with what he's saying almost all the time. A typical Nigerian home yes. will do carbohydrate, a bit of carbohydrate in the morning, afternoon, and night, and sometimes with uh, uh, little or no protein, uh, protein mm. okay, source of protein in the diet. In fact, let me say that basically most of our diets in this part of the world are not balanced. So. Okay. And sometimes it has to do with our um, um, economic and uh, financial know-how, mm. okay? 
poverty plays a role, okay? It is so, not just in Nigeria, in several parts of the world. Now, all the common foods we have in this environment are majorly carbohydrates. So what is the way out? Mm -hmm. The way out is to eat smaller portions. Of all of them. Of all of them. Just have a balanced yes. diet. Now, uh, uh, another way out is to avoid sedentary mm. lifestyle, life of living a life of inactivity mm. all the time. You, you, you can inculcate exercise in yeah. your daily living. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't, you don't, you don't have to wait until you have an opportunity of going on to the, the field gym, or yeah. going to um, going to gym mm. to exercise, and then you can stay in your house, play music, dance to eat. Mm. These are practical steps. Dance to eat for at least more than 30 minutes. Mm. What is recommended is 30 minutes of exercise mm. at least five times mm. in one week. Mm. That can help you. Even for people who are diabetic already, mm -hmm. it can help them. It can enhance uh, a better sugar control, mm -hmm. okay, when they take their medications or probably when they take their insulin, depending on what treatment such, a, such an individual is having. Another one is to eat right. Mm. Very key. It's important. You need to eat healthy. You need to eat healthy diet. Your food should consist of fruits and vegetables, mm. grains, okay, lean protein. Sometimes people will ask, how do I make choices in terms of this? We're discussing diabetes. Protein is usually not a challenge, but there are other health issues that could come, mm -hmm. okay, from that. And then you need to avoid sugary things as much as possible, ask, yes. okay? Anything you're doing should be done with, a mo with, with moderation, okay? So that's all I can say on that, okay? Because we can't say because, because one wants to avoid uh, becoming <laughs> diabetic, uh, he or she should stop eating. Another essential aspect is to avoid becoming overweight mm. or obese. Mm. These are known risk factors for developing type mm. 2 diabetes, diabetes, okay? Mm. And how do you know? There's what we refer to as BMI, body mass, mass index. index. It gives you an idea of where you are mm -hmm. in terms of calculation. And I will share with us this morning, everybody can actually do the calculation. You don't need to get to a hospital to do the calculation. All you need to do is to get someone, get a tape in your house, mm -hmm. probably put it on a wall, mark Stand out. Yes, mm -hmm. or get someone to assist you to take your height in meters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you if you get your height in meters, if you have a, a bathroom weighing scale, or you probably have an idea of what you weighed the last time mm -hmm. you visited the hospital, that can also be be useful. Okay. So the simple calculation, in a way anybody can do it at home and get the BMI, is to divide your weight okay. first with your height in meters. Whatever answer you get, divide it a second time. If you have your calculator, you can quickly do that. Okay, somebody who is wh whose height is uh, about one point. Uh, we have Elizabeth, Elizabeth. from Lizzie. Lagos. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good morning. All right, please go on. Go on with your question. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a diabetic patient. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. It will be nice to hear from you. Uh, what I want to ask, like, I'm a diabetic patient. Okay. So, more than how many years now I'm in on with uh, drugs. I'm a drug dependent. I, I go with, uh, I, I take glucose page and same thing I take So now, now, for some time now, I go to my tummy very big. I don't know what to do. I went for scan. They say it's fast, 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 fast. So I don't know. Mm. Come again. You said you went for scan? I went for scan. Yes. All the time, so fast, fast. I don't know how to do that. I don't know. Uh, what is your weight, ma? And how old are you? My thumb is uh, 64. 64. Okay. Your, your, your weight, 64, 64 years, I believe. Yes, I'm 64. Okay. What about your weight, ma? Ah, I don't know how my way to. I know. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not, okay, thank you very much. Thank okay, you very much. Okay, just listen up. Alice, I have an have idea. An idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she takes uh, a drug called uh, metformin, okay? 
um, she mentioned the brand name there. It's a very familiar drug. People who have uh, diabetes are familiar with the drug. She's 64 years of age. Mm. At 64, I don't expect Madam to go playing squash. I don't expect her to do strenuous exercise anymore because of her age. age. And she also mentioned that she's also on drugs for BP. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are two uh, uh, major health condition, chronic health condition. But what I can advise her to do is to pay more attention because from the picture she painted, mm. she appears to be either overweight, yeah. her weight may be on the big size or big side. Okay, so what I will advise her to do is to avoid as much as possible living a life of inactivity. Mm -hmm. She should at least take a walk. Yeah, you're that talking can help. about that now, sir. Yes, she can take a walk. Okay, apart from taking a walk, uh, she can make it a routine at least five times in a week to work for a period of 30 minutes or more. If she can, she also needs to pay more attention to her diet. It's key. Mm. I usually tell my clients who are diabetic, who are on drugs, even if you're in the best of uh, insulin therapy, mm. if you don't pay attention to what you eat, if you do, if you do not do dietary modifications, mm. your sugar level can never be controlled. Okay, so as a, as a diabetic, not just diabetic, all of us, because you have heard in that video that we watched a while ago, WHO Science in Five saying that out of the 400 million, one quarter of people that are living with diabetes in the world do not even have an idea that they are diabetic. That's scary. What, what that means is that uh, one in every four people mm -hmm. is living with an undiagnosed diabetes. Mm -hmm. So that you don't look at it is about them and not us, and not me. It's about all of us, mm. okay? Except if you have gone to check, or if you have uh, uh, a habit of doing that health checks, it is mm. advisable that anybody who has any of the risk factors we have mentioned, if you're above 45 years of age, if you don't have any risk factor, you can at least go to check once in three years. Mm. But if you do have any of the risk factors we have mentioned, which of course is overweight, obesity, and all other ones, you need to check much more frequently, at mm. least once a year, mm. okay? So she should pay more attention to her diet, very important, and then see how she can inculcate exercise in her daily life. Added to that is that she needs to be meticulous and very compliant with her drugs, mm. is important. And she should also ensure that she sees her doctors, keeps her medical appointments appointment at all times. Mm. That's the only way she can manage the situation. Keep in mind that diabetes is not curable. Boy. I was, in short, I have the question here. <laughs> Alfred from Abuja. Thank you. Thank you too. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, well. Alfred. How are you today? Well, health matter. Yes, Thank you so. very much. I want to speak to the doctor. I what? want to ask this question, just this single question. Yes, go ahead, Does sir. Does sugarcane cause uh, diabetes? Sugarcane. Yes. No, sugar cane cannot cause diabetes, sir. <laughs> okay. Sugar. Uh, uh, sugar cane cannot cause uh, uh, cannot cause diabetes. Now, the, the the truth of the matter is that when you take sugar cane, you yes. will get a type of sugar. You derive a type of sugar, but because the name is sugar, <laughs> and we are saying blood no. sugar, blood sugar, even the rice, and the yeah. yam, yes. the doya, what about chocolate that we eat? <laughs> yes, they will all give us. Sugar at the end of at the end day. Of it. Is it yes. that you call it sugar, you call it glucose? Mm. They mean the same okay. thing. Okay. Okay, but consuming sugar, sugar cane. cane alone will not cause diabetes. <laughs> no Thank such you. food can cause diabetes just because one is eating, consuming them. Consuming mm. them. Okay, but what we usually advise is to moderation. eat them with moderation. Mm. All right. Mm. Doctor, please, before you, because I know you want to talk about symptoms. Now, you mentioned age. I mean, she talked about the fact that she's 64. Does age have anything to do with uh, diabetes? Yes, age has a lot to do with diabetes. Uh, uh, before we went on break, I was going to talk about the modifiable and the non-modifiable risk factors. Okay. Modifiable ones, uh, the ones you can prevent. Mm. The mo non-modifiable ones, the ones you cannot prevent. Mm. And of course, one of them is age. Okay. okay so now that I have mentioned them, let's take on them. Okay, the non-modifiable risk factors have to do with those 
risk factors that you have no power of control over them. These include age, mm -hmm. race. Hmm. By race, I mean your ethnic background. In the US, they usually talk about African American, people of African American descent, Latin American, Pacific Islanders, Asian, Asian Americans, that these groups are a lot more predisposed to having diabetes than any other group. So your ethnic background is also important, and you can't change it. We are not Caucasians. We are not to Igbo. We can be. We are Africans. Africans. Okay? <laughs> Uh, we seem to have lost uh, uh, a core came in when yes. I was trying to give a simple calculation mm. that we can all do in the confines of our home. Yes. Uh, please, um, let's calculate yours or mine. Okay. So <laughs> turn, turn your phone to your calculator. Hey, okay. um, so let's do it. Take a practical step. All right. Let's see. Okay. So my calculator. You're there now? Yes. Okay. Now, my own weight is 95 kg. 95. Okay. And my, white, my height is 1.8 meters. So am I One point, no, you're dividing, dividing. Okay. 95 kg by 1.8, divided by 1.8. We are calculating BMI, body mass index. Okay. What, the, what do you have there? 52.7. Divide it again with 1.8. What do you have now? 29.3. 29.3. So my BMI is 29.3. So that is the practical step that each and every one of us can okay. calculate our BMI, okay. and you have an idea of where you are. Okay. okay? So, doctor, is this so at this category, uh, I'm already overweight. Eh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. So are do you know your it? do you know your weight? Yes, I do. Okay. So let's calculate yours. Mm. Okay. What's your weight? 58. 58. <laughs> okay, so divide 58. What's your height in meters? Uh, I don't know. In <laughs> CM. Do you know in CM? I think I'm um, I'm 5.8 the last time. Okay, so oh, no, no, it, can, it can't be 5.8. Your height should be about 165, 170. Okay, but just let's, let's use okay. 1.65. Okay, divide so by 1.65. What do you have? 35. Divide it again by 1.65. Grace from Abuja. I don't feel well. Uh, so what do you have? 21. Your weight is good. Yay! Good morning, Grace. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, thank you very much. You went on a practical note. Yes, yeah, so. So let's have you. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, Hello, good morning, Grace. Grace. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Please go on. Okay, are we, am I talking with the doctor? Yes, yes you are. Yes. You are. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, want to ask, I want to ask the doctor that I have, I, I always have pain on my two, two ribs. Okay. So I don't know what is the cause. Okay, mm. on your ribs, on either side, yeah. if, if I got yeah. you right. How old are you, ma? I'm, I'm, I'm 30, 34. Okay, you're a young person. Mm. Mm. Uh, do you have cough? No. Okay. Yes. Now, I will advise you. Because where you're talking about is a, is, a, is a region we refer to as chest. Okay, so mm. in a medical parlance, I can call that chest pain. So you're having a chest pain. Any chest pain should be, should be followed through by a doctor. Okay. You may need to, okay. if you see your doctor, there may be a need to ask you to do a chest x-ray. Mm. There may be a need okay. to ask you to do ECG. Mm. Are you diabetic or hypertensive? Obviously, with your age, you may not. Okay, so... You uh, need... Yes, go ahead. At, at time, sometimes they will... If I, go, if I go to check my BP, they will tell me my BP is rise. Mm. I should have a rise, my BP. And they always complain about my BP, so I don't really know. Yes, that, so that has given it out, mm. obviously. Uh, 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 your BP is not good enough. And what that means is that you may be having hypertension. Mm. Uh, and uh, you shouldn't be one of the people that will be counted as undiagnosed. Now you ha that you have this information available to you. So go back to your doctor. Let them do a comprehensive health check and see what form of treatment they can put you on. It may not be drugs. It may be non-pharmacological interventions like exercise, asking you to carry out one or two exercises to, to ensure that your weight drops from probably what it is at the moment. It's not all the time that you'll be started on drugs. 
Mm. But even if they have to start you on drugs, it's about your own health. Mm. It's about staying healthy. healthy. Yeah. Okay? So thank you very much for calling. Mm. So Dr. Bart, I'm fine, eh? Yes, you're good. You're good. Slimmest like of them all. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so you have a healthy weight. Okay. No yeah, doubt about that. Right. Okay, so, so we were talking about Norm, risk factors. Yes. Okay? About risk age, factors. Risk. So, yes, the non-modifiable and the modifiable yes. one. With respect to type 1 diabetes, you mm. have age as well. Okay. You have family history as well. And, of course, you have genetics. Family history, what that means is that if you have a parent who has been diabetic, either of them, mm. the offsprings may have diabetes in their lifetime. Possibility. Not in all cases. Strong possibility that mm. that can happen. Mrs. Augustine, good morning. Good morning, my brother. How are you today? <laughs> I'm fine, though. Yeah. I love your program. Please. Thank you very much. Please, my dear, is it good for someone to eat yam? Because they are always making us to be afraid that if we eat yam, that yam causes diabetes because yam has sugar. Because of that, I'm afraid of eating yam. Thank you very much. Uh, yam happens to be one of my favorites in terms of food. I eat it all the time. I can eat it three times a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you that I haven't gotten diabetes. Okay. okay. But what is important is whatever you eat, eat in moderation. Yam is not anything different from eating rice mm -hmm. or eating uh, a rubo um, uh, 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 and some other carbohydrate containing food. They are the same thing, basically. No Singular food yeah. can give you diabetes. Thank you very much. So eat your yam. Yes, yeah, so you can eat your yam. So those risk factors that we talked about for type 1, you can't change your family history. You can't change your age. Mm -hmm. Age in type 1 is usually the uh, younger age groups. Okay. You can't change your genetic makeup. Okay? Now for type 2, the risk factors too, the non-modifiable risk factors in type 2, family history is there. Race, we have talked about that. Being over 45 years of age, okay? This one is a bit medical. Acanthosis nigricans. Mm -mm. Having a, a, a velvety kind of fat around the neck and the armpit, okay? That can predispose one. That can be a risk factor for diabetes, okay? Having had a history of gestational diabetes, this for our women. Yeah, the pregnant one. You may have, you may have had uh, pregnancy-induced uh, diabetes. There's also a pregnancy-induced hypertension as well. Is a risk factor for developing diabetes much later in life. Okay? Depression, too, is in the picture. Having had babies that weighed over 4.0 4 kg. Okay? Those are also in the picture. Having PCOS, polycystic Ovary syndrome in some of our women is another risk factor for developing diabetes type 2. Because of our time, we may not be able to exhaust them all. We will but definitely I can, have to continue. Yes, we will continue so next week. My questions are still here. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> all right, so we we'll definitely have to continue next week. Because even myself, I still get like five questions where I never asked the doctor. And now we will advise to make you know me the show. Yes. Next week, okay? Mm. So, so thank you. Thank you. Us. Stay safe. Yes, stay so healthy. And stick with science. Yes, we see you next science. week. <laughs> yes, sir. thank you, Slimmy. <laughs>